In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, where I'll ask the question, what makes sin enticing? Genesis 3, verses 1 through 7 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. The first sin against God is depicted for us here in Genesis chapter 3, and it's here that we see just what it is that sin is. Sin is a rejection of what God has said, instead doing that which we desire. And we recognize that there is an enticement to sin, that it always looks like it's going to give us something that is better, something that is superior than what we currently have. But what we find when we actually go ahead and do that which is counter to what God has purposed for us, we discover that while sin is enticing, it is not good. So here are three thoughts from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, answering the question, what makes sin enticing? Thought number one, promise of satisfaction. Sin promises satisfaction. And this is the idea where Eve sees the tree and she sees that it's good for food. The idea is pretty simple. She thinks that she's going to satisfy this desire that she inherently has this desire for food, that it's going to somehow satisfy her better than what is readily available to her from all the other trees in the garden. You see, Eve is given this option. She's given this option to follow God and do that which he has said, or to do something else entirely, to violate what God has said. And she goes ahead and does something that is against God's command because there's this promise of a greater satisfaction in doing other than that which God has commanded. Thought number two, promise of beauty. When Eve looks at the fruit, she sees that it's good. She sees that it's good, and apparently Adam is right there along with her, and he sees that it's good. He sees this promise of satisfaction, this promise of beauty as well. And what they look at when they see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it looks good. It is something that's beautiful to behold. And if there's something that's beautiful to behold, what do we want to do? We want to grab it. We want to take hold of it. We want to have it for ourselves. But in going after that which appears beautiful in the moment, you might miss that which is of greater beauty that you've already grown accustomed to. The idea is simple. We like that which is novel, that which is new, that which is different. And oftentimes when we're going after the thing that is novel, new, or different, we forget or fail to recognize the beauty of the things that are already around us. Adam and Eve already had something that was beautiful. They had this great relationship with their Heavenly Father where he would come and he would walk with them in the cool of the day. It seems like that was something that was happening prior to the fall. But here, they had this promise of beauty, this delight to the eyes that they had within their grasp, even though it was commanded they not take it because they wanted that beauty for themselves. They reached out and they took it. And when they did, they lost that which was of greater value, this close relationship with their creator. Thought number three, promise of wisdom. Ultimately, the great desire of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is this wisdom that you get from it. You get to become like God. You become like him because you're going to know the difference between good and evil. And this is absolutely appealing to all of us. Don't we all want to be wise? Don't we all want to have greater knowledge? Don't we want to be able to understand things more thoroughly? Well, of course we do. But in seeking out knowledge, we need to make sure that we aren't undermining that wisdom that we've already received. Adam and Eve have been granted great wisdom, and the great wisdom was this, don't do this thing. It was great wisdom to abstain from this fruit 
of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In fact, they were more wise before they had it because they were dwelling in innocence. But then after they take it, all of a sudden they have some additional knowledge, but that knowledge comes from failure. And that failure inevitably results in suffering and pain and all of the punishments that come as a result of this sin they make against God. There's always a promise of wisdom and beauty and satisfaction in any sin. It's always so very enticing for us, but we need to realize that the Lord has granted us something so much greater in obedience to him. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Genesis chapters 1 through 3. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.